Okay, so hopefully everything is fine. So welcome back. And uh, I want to tell you that in case there is any confusion over the word of these states, quantum state and then n particle quantum states uh, or micro state, the n particle uh, quantum state is the micro state. I want to specify the following. Now, suppose there are n particles, they're interacting, they have an Hamiltonian, right? And if you have an Hamiltonian, then uh, you can figure out it's different. Uh, uh, so basically you can figure out it's different eigenstates, right? Uh, different quantum numbers, different energy levels. So, so, Suppose you have a harmonic oscillator, then one, and the Hamiltonian is given. You have, uh, you have got the different uh, quantum states corresponding to uh, uh, different values of energy. Now, if you put one particle in the in the in the suppose lowest energy state that will have a certain wave function. Now suppose there are bosons and you put one more on that, right? Then the wave function or the composite system will be made by making, by taking the two wave functions of the two particles and making a symmetric combination of it. If you had fermions, then of course, then two particles could not, I mean, uh, yeah, and the, uh, then the two particles will not be able to have the same energy level, especially if their spin is the same. So they will have, they will occupy two different energy levels. Each corresponding to each energy level, you will have a shy one and a shy two for the second particle. And the n particle quantum state or the two particle quantum state will be made by the um, by the stator de uh, determinant combining these two wave functions so the hamiltonian defines the energy levels the values of the allowed values of the energy each corresponds to an eigenstate and a combination of these uh, one particle states, right? Suppose one particle is in a particular energy level that has a certain shy one. Second particle is in the third energy level that has a different shy three for particle two. And then making symmetric combinations of it, you would make the n particle quantum state, which corresponds to a microstate. And now you could have multiple particles, assuming the, the bosons, that uh, the three particles in ground uh, ground state uh, four particles in energy level, suppose four, and so on and so forth, right? And then you can combine the wave functions of seven particles in a symmetric manner to create the n particle wave function corresponding to a microstate. So that's what it means uh, when. That's what the quantum state and then the n particle quantum state, that's what it means. And we are really specifying how many particles are there in different energy levels, right? When we are discussing something like this. Uh, so with that, we continue from where we uh, left off. So we are going to discuss Fermi Dirac statistics and our aim is to calculate uh, the n bar s which is the distribution function, which specifies how many, what is the mean number of particles? And the mean uh, can be an, a, a non-integer number as well. Uh, um, what is the mean number of particles in uh, a particular energy level S, right? So that's what it means. And uh, suppose the zero at the uh, energy level, I mean, the ground state, uh, yeah, the probability of occupation as defined by the um, partition function, 
break is one fourth. Of course, it's a fermion, so you can either have one particle or uh, zero particle, right? And uh, the probability of occupation, depending upon whatever be it, uh, or is uh, um, to have one particle in the ground state for whatever reasons, or say the nth state, the sth state is uh, three fourth. And then you could have in possibility a uh, average number of particles in state S, which is some number between zero and one, right? So that's what we are after. And we are doing Fermi Dirac. At the moment, we want to get a general expression for, for when you have fermions distributed in different energy levels. So the way we are going to start out is, uh, suppose we are interested in a particular state S. And for ease, for visualization, we could say, let's consider the energy level 1. Uh, or rather the the level which has which corresponds to energy epsilon one okay so so, so this epsilon one uh, that's the that's s so just for visualization you could think um, that that's the one and suppose we could write down the partition function uh which is of course a sum over all microstates uh says that there are zero particles in energy level S, which in our particular case is epsilon one, the, the, the quantum state or the energy level co corresponding to epsilon one, right? So then you are going to sum over all the microstates which doesn't have a single particle in level S, epsilon one. So you are summing over all the microstates and S, so you, so you are summing over all the microstates which doesn't have any particle in level S and all other energy levels could have, suppose, I mean, total number of particles is fixed, but it can have N2 or N3 uh, so epsilon two uh, energy level can have n two particles, um, which could be one, two. Uh, sorry, if it's a fermion, then it can be zero and one. Then n three can be zero and one. So all possible combinations, all possible combinations of n two, zero and one in this case in different energy levels, right? And uh, of course, higher and the combination of these zero ones. Uh, the values of n2, n3, n4, n5, and so on, uh, sum of all these numbers has to be equal to capital N. Uh, yeah, so total number of particles is N. Uh, so that would, the sum of all those microstates would be Z S zero. Okay. Now, a certain set of microstates is left out. And the set of microstates which are left out in this sum are those microstates where there is actually a particle in level S, right? And there are n minus one particles in all the other energy levels. So Z1S means there is one particle for a particular energy level S. Uh, should also have e to the power beta epsilon one, right? Because there's always a particle in epsilon one, here is equal to one. And uh, the sum is, the sum is, um, so this should be really, I mean, just like here it is written, e to the power minus beta epsilon s, so this would be a sum over all microstates, right? Uh, where you have different number of particles, where you have a different number of particles in the other energy levels. And there has to be N minus one of them, 
right? So, 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 so that's going to be the sum over all microstates when there is one particle in uh, level one and n minus one uh, in all the other levels. And or, again, n2 um, could be zero or one and n3 could be zero and one, but the sum of n2, n3, n4, n5, until uh, whatever be the energy levels which are available has to be n minus one because one particle always is in epsilon one and that would contribute with e to the power, e to the power minus beta epsilon s to the partition function. Okay? Here you wouldn't have epsilon. Uh, yeah, and this is a sum over all microstates. These are the sum over all microstates uh, where there are n minus one uh, particles. Yes. So, so the average number of particles in state S can be written as. So this is the total partition function. You see, Z is zero n. Okay, this is defined the way this is. And when you are writing the total partition function, you are introducing this e to the power minus beta epsilon s. And this is a sum over all. Uh, it is actually equal to this. Right. So when there are n minus 1 particles in the rest of the energy levels. I think this definition is right. This is how it is defined. And this is a partition function and this quantity again is the partition function when I, so the total partition function is this but this is a certain quantity which is sum over the energy contributions when you have n minus one particles distributed in all energy levels except s because s has one particle already and this is the partition function when there is always this quantity is the partition function when there is one particle in uh, level s this is the partition function which is when there are zero at zero particles in level s and the sum of this is the total partition function and so basically you are summing over all microstates and it's for you to realize that n bar s has to be when there is zeroth particle how many microstates are there divided by the partition function into one? So, so here ns can take only zero and one value. And then uh, what is the probability of accessing all the microstates which have one particle in state S? So this in general would be the average number of particles and this is what we are after the distribution function except that this expression of n bar s is not a very useful uh, you it's not a very useful uh, expression so we're going to simplify it and calculate an expression for n bar s which is more useful and which is we can use in uh, the later classes. So that's the point. Okay. So this function, so you know this is zero and this z and uh, z one s n minus one, we bring it to the denominator. So we divide it the de denominator by that and hence we get z zero s n Z one s n minus one e to the power beta s. We just we have brought this entire term to the denominator, and hence this gives e to the power plus beta s, and this gives this one. Okay, so now our aim is to figure out a reasonable expression for this quantity, the ratio of these two z0s and z1s. And note this 
I'm not calling it as the partition function because the partition function actually is this. When there is always one particle in uh, epsilon in, in state S. Right? Now, in general, we can write down log. So we are taking a log. Um, uh, so we are basically want to do a Taylor expansion and calculate Z S N minus delta N in general. Uh, though here delta N can be only uh, one. But in general, we are writing down uh, for any partition function, uh, suppose with S, it can be written as log Z S Uh, calculate uh, with n particles minus del del zs n derivative with respect to n calculated when uh, this quantity is has uh, when there are n particles so so you are taking this derivative for the function which has n particles into delta n and we are we are neglecting higher order terms and this quantity shall remind you is called minus. Yeah, so there was a minus sign. So alpha is this quantity, del del n of ln zs n. In that case, we can simplify this, so bringing the log and so on and so forth. Z n minus one, uh, z s n minus delta n equal to zs n into e to the power minus alpha s delta n, right? Uh, in general, not uh, for fermions, then this quantity, so bringing this on the denominator, uh, okay. Or what we are doing is taking this to the other side and bringing this in the denominator. And the reason we are doing it because we want to take it as close. And we want to basically calculate this quantity. And here for fermions, delta n can be one, right? Uh, thereby, thereby, this ratio is e to the power alpha. Now, of course, this alpha we can associate with the minus mu by kBT, where mu was the chemical potential, right? Now comes a crucial step. Now the value of the chemical potential or the value of the alpha so this calculation can be carried out for any any particular well uh, energy level s right and uh, you can correspondingly calculate the z s you can calculate uh, this uh, this z s right uh, <clears throat> which can be So since this is such a large quantity, the sum of so many large number of terms, the value alpha s cannot critically depend. So you're really looking at an n-particle system and you're saying how much is zs changing? The so log of zs changing with del n, where del n is one. Uh, so that's the thing that you are calculating. And that cannot critically depend upon what S you choose, right? Because it's a sum of such a large number of terms, the relative change. Now, whether you uh, leave out, whether you leave out, suppose the second level or the fifth level or the 10th level, the approximate value of log ZSN will be very similar. And when you take a derivative of this quantity with respect to n, the alpha s n cannot critically depend upon which level you are leaving out to calculate this, right? So what we're going to take is alpha s equal to alpha. That is true for any value, any value of s. It's not critically depend upon which level you uh, which state or energy level s is omitted in the calculation of z s n and just to remind you that alpha can be related to minus beta mu which is mu by kbt and this in turn uh, this mu this chemical potential n is 
اه can be written as it should not be log but it should be rather del del so this is del del n del del n of uh, the free energy so this quantity is the same as so if you introduce a one by uh, minus kbt here and minus kbt here so this minus kbt ln z f n is associated with the free energy, right? Uh, one has to check up this formula. I have a missed out a minus sign. Uh, even if, uh, so this form, this has to be checked out this part, but this alpha is equal to minus beta mu is definitely true. Here, whether I've missed a minus sign or not, I have to check a bit. Right? Uh, yeah. Anyway, so in turn, so here we substitute essentially e to the power minus beta epsilon s upon e to the power minus alpha. So whatever we got from here, you already had the beta epsilon s. Uh, as a consequence, the partition function, uh, sorry, the distribution function that you get can easily be written now as either e to the bar beta epsilon s plus alpha, or if you substitute the value of alpha, which is minus beta mu, then it is one upon e to the power epsilon s minus mu plus one. So this is the distribution function for fermions. And very similarly, one can calculate the distribution function for bosons as well. We'll I'll record in the next.